Good Friday morning, everybody. Uh, I have it just waking up here, so I still have bed hair, if you want to call it that. It is uh, Friday morning, January 13th, 9.08 a.m. Been up since about 7.30, I think. Went to bed very early last night to catch up on some of that sleep I was missing, but wanted to shoot this quick video this morning um, to talk a little bit about construction things around houses and how they impact financing. So there's a house I'm working on an offer on. We just inspected it yesterday. And the house is an older house, probably about 80 years old. Very, very solid house. Amazing new roof on it. Just really, really nice. All the way around. And it's on pillar and post construction. So that means it's on a crawl space, an older crawl space. Newer crawl spaces after the 60s have a, have a foundation around them, so the house sits on that foundation. Um, older homes before that time, we didn't build that way. We built with pillars and posts to support the house. So the old pillars and post foundations are just as good as any other foundation. Um, what becomes important with pillars and posts, however, is that no bugs and no water rot have gotten into them over the years. And this house that we did the inspection on yesterday was just one of the best, one of the nicest um, pillar and post homes um, in all of Windsor Essex County, as it turns out. We, and you don't know that until you crawl into the crawl space and take a look around. Um, but there were so many pillars and posts in this house. It was built like Fort Knox. It's like every two to four feet, there's a pillar and a post. That house is not going anywhere. It is very well supported. And when you're in the house as well, too, there's no you know, bending or curvature. It's a very, very light little curvature that you can feel in certain spots. Or there's a very little light bump up because you're standing on one of those pillars and posts. Um, but nothing serious at all. Or a slant across the whole house. Um, and I've seen that before. That um, I've rolled a marble from one end of the house to the other end of the house. And I gather yeah, steam going across it. And it's like, do you really want this house? Um, and I've done that before for a client. Um, the, the benefit of pillars and posts in this particular house is it's built like Fort Knox. It is not going anywhere. Very well supported. The only thing from an... Um, um, an investigative perspective that we found was that there's a little bit of water in the crawl space. So the sump pump system that they have down there is an old archaic sump pump system, and that needs to be changed out to a newer system. So does that cost very much at the end of the day? No. Does it need to be changed out? Not necessarily. As long as you keep the water moving away from the house, um, you could also build up or mound up the dirt around the house a little bit as well too to give it a little bit more of a grade away from the house and that would probably dry out the crawl space as well too it's just always recommended that you have a more modern sump pump system in any house any um, um, house that has a lower level to it or a, a crawl space to it should be dry underneath there and that's what a sump pump helps to be able to do um, and so that was all that we've seen the roof was impeccable a few little creases and cracks in the house, but that's just from a settling perspective on an 80-year-old house, that's all fine. Um, and there were no leaks in the plumbing. There were none of that stuff. The furnace was fine. All of that was all good. Um, and the house is on a double lot as well, too. <laughs> Go figure. Um, so I was able to snag that one for my client up in Toronto. The only challenge and the reason for this video is so that you understand... Um, for yourself, if you ever found a pillars and post home, what it means. So the challenge from a financing perspective is that some modern financial institutions don't like to loan on pillars and post homes. Now, many of the banks love um, pillars and post homes because they're just as solid as any other home. RBC, for one, will, of course, loan pretty much on anything. Um, they have a very, very, very complex underwriting process that has sheltered them from the storm. 
um, compared to BMO, who was very, very lenient with their funding processes, and that's causing them problems now. Um, but RBC has a strong track record of, of uh, financing pillars and post homes. They're not afraid of it. Um, and um, the other, uh, all of the, uh, some of the financial institutions that loan um, are pulling back on certain loans. They just are. It's part of this getting loans is harder process because some some carriers are pulling back from specific things that they otherwise used to finance. And that's why your mortgage broker is important to be able to know, OK, it's pillars and posts. Here's where I have to go. Now, there's one more complex thing to this as well, too. Let's say that you're you have some financial glitches from your past and you're just recovering from them. And you're doing everything completely correct, and it's time to go buy a house. So the challenge is that because you have a little bit less um, positive credit, then that limits the lenders that will look at you. There's only certain lenders that will look at you. Other lenders have, you know, if your credit score isn't 7644000 we won't do it. And so as a mortgage broker, yes, they might have 30 or 40 or 50 funding sources, but ideally a mortgage broker is much like a life insurance broker. They really work with the same carriers over and over and over and again, like I do. Um, I don't go very far afield at all. I, there's specific carriers that serve me very well and are there to answer the phone call when I pick up the phone call and I have some kind of an issue for a client. And that's more important than finding a dollar cheaper per month. Who cares? The end of the day the service part is the most important part of it so at the end of the day the pillars and posts can be a little bit of a challenge just because um, you might have be recovering from some debt issues um, and that restricts the carriers that will look at you and then in their underwriting catalog of what they will take and what they won't take um, some carriers won't take uh, pillars and posts a few, not a whole lot. Most people take pillars and posts, but I just need to communicate that to the mortgage broker so that they know, oh, wait a second, this is pillars and posts. I can't go at XYZ company. I have to go to ABC company to get the financing. That way they're not wasting their time too. It becomes very important in this whole thing. The uh, last thing to share with you as well too is that this particular house on South Pacific backs onto a railroad track. It just does. It's a double lot on a railroad track. And the trains that go up and down there are cruising along at about five or maybe 10. They're going very slow. Um, it's a very slow track there because it's right in the city. And so it's just a little rumbling blah, 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 when the train goes by. And then it's very, very quiet unless the, um, the, the, the wheels on some of the cars have some problems and you'll, you'll hear them squeak or you'll hear them thump, thump because they got flat spaces on them and stuff. But other cars just quietly go by. You don't even know that they're going by. It's like, shoo, there goes. And it's not like they're going that fast. Um, they're doing about five to 10 kilometers an hour. It seems like they're going very, very slow uh, because there are um, uh, pedestrians in that area as well too. The other benefit for this particular house is that there's no bridge or there's no um, grade crossings for the train. So they're not crossing over traffic where they have to sound their horn like they have to out here by my house, right over here. I'm glad I don't live by the tracks. Um, and I don't know why anybody wants, they're building new houses by the tracks that are $750,000, $800,000. And people are buying and I'm like, why? Why? Why do you want to be sitting at a railroad crossing? I don't understand. Uh, when the train goes by four or five times a day and at seven o'clock in the morning, it's sounding its horn and you're retired. Do you really want to have to get up at seven o'clock in the morning every morning because the horn's going, Rrr. but anyways, I digress. Uh, so some carriers also don't like to finance on railroad tracks. They just don't. Um, and they don't want to know that, yeah, the train only goes five kilometers an hour down through there and it's all perfectly safe. Just some carriers, we just don't loan on railroad tracks. So at the end of the day, um, the location of a house and the structure of the house, the building component of the house can also limit your access to financing. And then if you have a little bit of recovery that you're doing, that also shrinks down your access to financing. So um, especially now that we're in a hard financing market, 
um, it just becomes that much more of a moving piece that a, a good professional realtor should be communicating to everybody because the mortgage broker is sitting in an office. They're sitting in a basement, actually, in this particular case, and they don't know anything about pillar and post construction. They don't know anything about railroad tracks, and they don't know anything about this house. Um, they don't care to know anything about this house. That's what I'm supposed to be doing and relaying to them as well, too. So thanks for watching. That helps you to be able to understand a little bit about the complexities of getting financing in today's world, a little bit about pillars and posts, how it's a perfectly fine uh, construction process, um, as long as the pillars and posts are good. And that's why it becomes very important to investigate them. Um, and uh, it gives you a little bit more information about railroad tracks and financing as well, too. Um, that way you're better in the know because you watch these videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.